cellular level from day one when the Tidlands got me at 11 days old and adopted me when I was eight. So I stayed in their household and I lived it. And I was a recipient of it. And so when I grew up, which took a long time, I'm still growing, still learning, but when I was in the oil company, I had a phone call one day and this guy out of nowhere, a place called Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, phones me up and he says, Anyways, he phoned me up and he was a pilot and he said to me, we've got a cargo plane here and we want to fill it with food and we want to know if you want to come with us to, I don't know where it was, it was somewhere in Africa and I just, Okay, I'm running a business and my whole mind is about how many horizontal wells I can drill and how much revenue I can get out of it. And I'm listening to this guy on the phone thinking, where did this world come from? And I thought, there's no way I'm going to get on a plane with you and find a, a, a plane load of food to go somewhere that I don't even know what you're talking about. But it stuck with me. And I thought, someday I'm going to explore that, but right now I don't have time. And I knew that at some point in my life, I would give back a little bit of what I've been given. Because I've been successful, I don't have any children, I got a ton of energy, and I have to channel it somewhere. So there came a point in time in my life when I could give back. And I created the foundation on a whim. I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know what charity was about, other than I used to write a lot of checks. And I just jumped in, and I decided that there was a fellow in Calgary, and I've had a lot of men that have been mentors to me, but he had started a foundation, he was doing work in Zambia, and he kind of told me about how he set it up. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna work with Operation Eyesight, go to India, and see how they do this stuff. Because I wanna see where the money goes. And we went, I funded it, and we did eye operations. I came home, we had a board by that time, we had our number, and I talked to one of our board members, who's a doctor, and her and I flew around the world, mostly in the Amazon area first, and did medical trips for people. And I watched how you can go from money, which I thought philanthropy was, and I knew the heart part of it, and I watched people change as we worked with them. The medical avenue was just an avenue into the community. It didn't matter what we were doing. But we used that as a resource, and we watched people change, in particular women that would come from miles to come and see us with you know, three or four kids, one on the front, one on the back, on, on one on each hand. And they'd come at the early hours of the morning to be treated, and then we started talking to them and getting to just talk about their lives. And I realized the power of philanthropy in many different ways keep coming back to Calgary and raising money. That was my skill. The oil company was a public company. I had to raise money across Canada to drill. So I didn't come from wealth. I had some, but I like to engage a lot of different people. And so our board is set up, so we engage a lot of volunteers. And what I see at the Canadian Women's Foundation is a community of women who want to contribute what they can um, which varies greatly, but it can be um, a money, time, influence, uh, and whatever people can bring to the table. And they want to exchange that for social change. And so really we're like a bridge between people who want, women who want to see a different world, but they're not quite sure, you know, how to go about that. Uh, and we exchange their resources with the organizations working on the ground. We've given over a thousand grants uh, all over Canada uh, with organizations that are doing work on the ground, creating that change, and we need the resources. So we're really the bridge in between. And we're one of 160 women's funds around the world now. Uh, I was on the board of the Women's Funding Network, which is a global organization, a uh, membership organization of women's funds around the world for a number of years. So there are now 160 women's funds on six continents and um, in more than 30 countries. And almost all of them are just like the Canadian Women's Foundation, started by women who said, it's time we did something for ourselves. And almost all of us are working on the same issues, poverty, violence, um, empowerment, leadership, girls, um, and together we're creating a real women's philanthropy movement around the world. 
So one of the addresses on the little website addresses on the little card is for Canadian Women's Foundation, but it's also there for the Women's Funding Network. So you can look by country and see um, what funds are uh, happen to be in your country. Um, and also there's a, a several global funds. There's a global fund for women and several others that work around the world. Thank you. Um, Mary, your focus uh, has been quite broad in terms of your giving, and yet it appears when, when one goes into you, onto your website that there is a lot of work being done with women and girls. Can you talk a little bit about how conscious that is, did it evolve, and, and what, what you really feel when you, you talk about uh, giving from the heart? Where, where is giving to women and girls specifically for you and work you do? I, I can, when I began, it wasn't about women and girls, it was about people. People, anyone. And we, when we, I, I gave you the little glimpse of when we, the medical programs in the Amazon. But really what hit me was we had an opportunity to go to Angola two months after the war was over, the 27 year war. And go in and see if we could get money to the people. That was our objective, that was from our donor. And so we went and we explored, we interviewed all kinds of different organizations and we went into, we went into two. One of them was a microfinance program when microfinance wasn't popular back then, this was in 2002. And we saw women everywhere, women and kids, all of Angola was pretty well, women and kids, there weren't a lot of men left. And um, they had no opportunity. So we, we like to go into the rural areas. We flew into um, the rebel headquarters um, and worked out of there. And we found an organization out of Canada that was there, had been there for 25 years, and worked with them on setting up a microfinance program with USAID. So we were funding. And we were, I was visiting the women in the markets to see what they were doing. And I watched these women just, they were totally illiterate. But they, they were built on their whole organization of their little groups of 10 was all built on trust. That little word, trust. They didn't know what was written in their little passport books with the numbers in it. They didn't know how to add them up. But they knew how to take things to the market and get the money, and someone was recording it, and they had savings. And this program's taken off to be 9,000 people. The majority of them are women, and they have their own, I think it's a $1.7 million independent credit facility. So that was my, in that instilled in me from the, the get-go about how if you give women an opportunity and women, mothers, then see their gir the little girls see what their mothers are doing and they repeat. We all do it. It's the repeat button. So if we can get to the mothers, then the children are affected in so many ways that empower them. They're going to school, they now have shelter, their confidence, their self-esteem, their world changes and their reality changes and they believe they can do more. And so that's why, in so many ways, we have done a lot of work with women and children around the world and we seem to attract a lot of women and children. So whether it's microcredit or water or whether we're building schools or orphanages, we have women coming to us as volunteers that want to offer their time. And when we take them out, we watch not only the people that we're working with in other cultures change, we watch the transformation of women from Canada change. And it's beautiful, because we have so much abundance here, and we really don't get it until you get to connect with other women in other countries about how much we have. 